there, okay? Let's go. Let's go. Let's give the Lord some praise in here today. Amen. It's just a blessing to, to be alive. Amen. Amen. We want to thank Elder Richardson for that prayer. Uh, let's get into our lesson tonight that's going to come from Mark's Gospel, chapter 7, beginning at verse 24 to verse 30. And you also need uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, beginning in verse 23. So I'll say those scriptures again. Mark, the seventh chapter, verse 24 to verse 30. And then you also need Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15. Amen. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, starting at verse 25. Our lesson today is a faith that presses and perseveres. A faith that presses and perseveres. A faith that presses and perseveres. Somebody say amen. Right, and so we're going to read Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. I would like us to read that uh, together, amen. Matthew chapter 7, Mark chapter 7, all right, Mark chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. Y'all ready? Somebody still turning? Somebody still trying to find it? All right. I got Mark 7, chapter, verse 24. Let's read together. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man known it, but he could not be hid. Verse 25, for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. And the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled for it is not meat to take to the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs and she answered and said unto him yes lord yet the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs let's keep reading and he said unto her for this saying go thy way the devil has gone out of thy daughter. I want to talk, amen. This is our lesson of faith that presses and perseveres. Okay? I want to ask anybody, I want to ask a question tonight. Does anybody in this room have a need in your life? Hmm. Amen. Yes. Everyone here has some kind of need. Amen? Amen? I think we all can admit that we need something. Amen. Some people are looking at 
devastating family problems. Amen. Some are looking at financial difficulty. Some are looking at a problem with a child, like this text. And some see their own soul and realize that they are lost. And some are looking at some type of disease and wondering what lies ahead. Amen, somebody. Amen. And in the midst of all of your problems, you need somebody to help you. I need to ask this question in here. Is there anybody that need help? You need someone that can turn, you can turn to, uh, to help you uh, figure some things out. You need a God to work in your life. Amen. We all need God. Amen. To move some mountains. Amen. And, and watch this. This is only for the mature people tonight that can say this. You don't need God to move every mountain, just the highest one. You don't need God to give you, watch this, um, 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 to lift every burden. You need God to lift the heaviest burden. Is that making any sense? If you don't need God to give you a whole loaf, just a crumb sometimes will do. All right. Y'all stick with me here because I promise you it's going to be good. Thanksgiving is around the corner. Amen. Amen. This, this is what's going on in this story that I read. Y'all hear me tonight. That this woman, she's a mother who is in a desperate situation. And she needs something in her life. And she comes to the Lord. And she's not asking for a whole meal. She's just asking for crumbs. Somebody say just a little bit, just a little bit. She's just asking the Lord to move in her situation. Somebody's here tonight because you need God to move in your situation. Okay, and as soon as that encounter is over, watch this, uh, Jesus dealing with his disciples and he's coming into this town, watch this, she petitions Jesus for some help and she faces several challenges. Everybody say several challenges. And here's the lesson. Even though she faces several challenges, she keeps going. Amen. She's persistent. Y'all got me? She presses anyhow. She perseveres. I'm going to say it again. She's got a lot of challenges. She's facing a lot of challenges. But she has a faith that's persistent. She has a faith that presses. And she has a faith that perseveres. I hope y'all get this. Because somebody tonight got challenges and you pressed your way tonight. And I want you to look at some things that she did. This is Mark chapter 7. And we're going to look at verse 25, and we're going to look at verse 26 to see what happened. Look at this, y'all. This, this is the reason she came. This woman came to Jesus because she's concerned about her daughter. She's concerned about her child. Where are my mothers at tonight? Come on, help me in here. So really, to bring it down, watch this, to break this thing down, she got some family issues. Are y'all with me tonight? Her child was demon possessed. Now listen, your child ain't always good. Come on, hit me here. 
Don't you come up in here thinking that your, your little Johnny don't never do nothing. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. This world got some kids around here, and all of them, I'm trying to tell you, they're, trust me, you don't play with them kids in school. Kids be cussing and everything. It's, this is true. And it's in the Bible time. Talking about your child don't be acting up. Please. The child was probably acting out in violence and in anger. There's a lot of angry children. It's a good lesson tonight. She needed help in a desperate way. And it may be that the demon was causing bodily harm to the child. If you got your Bibles open right now, Elder, get Matthew chapter 9, verse 22. You will find out that there was a child in Matthew chapter 9, verse 22, I think, that would throw himself in the water and throw himself in the fire. I think that's the scripture right there. You got it, Elder? Is that it? Matthew chapter 9, verse 22. Jesus turned and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good courage. Uh -huh. Let's go to Luke. I want to find this. I want to find this. I want to spend time on this. I want to find this. I want to make sure we find this because I need you to see this. Because there's a story about a kid who throws himself in the fire. And um, I want to read that. I want to read that. This child would throw himself in the water. He tried to drown himself. And I want to look at that so that we can see this. This scripture, I believe, is in John. Uh, he throws himself in the fire. And I want us to look at that. Let's go to the Gospel of John so we can see that. I want John chapter, because um, I don't want to miss that. I want to take my time on it because I want you to see this because sometimes children are destructive, self-destructive. Amen, somebody. We got a long way to go. I'm going to get it in a minute, y'all. But I want you, us to see this because this is a, a, a powerful lesson tonight. And we're going to get to the good part. Um, let's go to Mark chapter 9, verse 22, not Matthew chapter yes, 9, Mark. verse 22. Mark chapter 9, verse 22. If you go to Mark chapter 9, verse 22, you will see that situation there. Amen, somebody. And you look at Mark chapter 9, verse 22, we see a situation where a child is trying to self-destruct. So this mother came to Jesus. Somebody said she came to Jesus. Because her child needed something. Now, let's look at what happens when she gets there. Everybody go to Matthew chapter 15, verse 23. Because this story is also in Matthew chapter 15, verse 23. When you have Matthew chapter 15, verse 23, say, I got it. Well, she, there's the reason she came, but she also cries out. And Matthew 15, chapter, verse 23, tells us that she cried after Jesus. It's the ideal to get loud. She's not saying, Jesus, help me. She's screaming his name. Has anybody ever cried out to the Lord? It's a good lesson. Y'all hang out with me. This woman is shouting to Jesus for the help that she needed. Amen, somebody. Now, why is she crying? Why is she crying out to the Lord? Because she was brokenhearted over the condition of her child. Amen, somebody. And she was determined to get some help for her child. Now some of y'all in here, y'all been mothers for a long time and y'all ain't saying nothing. Every mother in here knows that she will go to the limit and the max for her child. Amen. Amen. And if you got somebody you love that you will go to the max on behalf of them. 
I need some mothers in here to talk about they've gone to the school. Come on, help me out now. Some grandmas too. Some grandmas too. Oh, yeah. Amen. So now, listen, we got, watch this. I promise you, we got some powerful stuff. There's a reason she came. Right? There's a reason that she crying out to God. She just ain't crying out to him. There's a reason. Somebody say a reason. And then there's a reason she called. Watch this, verse 25. This is Mark chapter 7, verse 25. Watch this. And we can shout on this. Verse 25 says, tells us that this woman had heard of him. Somebody say heard of him. Somebody was talking about Jesus. And perhaps she heard about how Jesus can heal all manner of diseases. Maybe she heard how he opened blinded eyes and unstopped the ears of the deaf. I wish I had some old school saints in here. Maybe she heard how he had driven demons out of other people. And maybe she had heard all kinds of stuff about how God can deliver. This woman came to Jesus because of faith and what she heard. And she said, if Jesus can heal them, because I didn't heard them stories, I know he could do something for my child. And I wish I was talking to somebody in here who knows about going to Jesus on behalf of somebody else. Come on, Pastor. You see, you can say, Lord, it was me last week, but today I'm going to God on, on behalf of somebody that can't make it to church. You ought not be selfish all the time. Sometimes you got to say, Lord, I need prayer. But sometimes, listen to me, as a grandparent, you need to pray for your grandchild, grandson, Amen. granddaughter. Because sometimes, listen to me, trust me on this. Listen, I'm not talking about nobody. It's just a different race now. It's just a different generation now. I wish I had some people here. And young mothers don't do what old school mothers used to do. Come on, talk to me in here. It's different. And some of you seasoned saints know I'm talking about it because you be looking at your child saying, I didn't raise you like that. Oh, it's a good lesson tonight. And, and, and I will tell you, watch this. Everybody that's ever prayed for somebody else, you're going to get blessed tonight. Come on now. I got to teach it before we get excited because I don't want you to get so excited and say, oh, the lesson was good. Somebody say, what are you talking about? I don't know, but he sure taught the lesson. Y'all hear me tonight? Can anybody identify with this woman in this text today? Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. You dealing with something that may be out of control? Yes, Jesus. Yes. Perhaps you could be at your wits end over a situation and you've exhausted yourself. And I want to tell somebody, regardless of what you are facing in life tonight, the answer will be found in Jesus Christ. Come on now. Y'all ready? Because I want to tell you something that this don't excite you. Try to keep yourself together. But if you love Jesus, go ahead and let loose. Here it is. He can move mountains. Yes, can. He can meet your need. He can save your soul. Y'all not with me? He can forgive your sins. He can touch your loved one. He can touch your child. Come on now. He can do it. But here it is. You got to do what this woman did. You got to get a hold of him. Come on now. And just because you, you, it looked like it ain't going to happen, you got to have what the lesson is tonight. You got to have a faith that presses and perseveres. Is this lesson good tonight? Because you got to understand, sometimes you got to hold on for a little while longer. I promise the lesson you're going to get good. So what's, what's going on here? Because we got to see. I want you to see everything that this woman went through as she hung on. She 
She didn't let go. She had a faith that presses and perseveres. She was persistent. Amen, somebody. So let's, let's look at this. Verse 23 to verse 27. She had to overcome many obstacles in order to secure her daughter's healing. And it seemed that she met resistance to her request, Sister Joanne, at every turn. Yet, she shows a faith that is pressing and persevering until she achieved. And look at some of the obstacles that she faced, but she still overcame them. Here it is. You can write them down. This is getting ready to get good. There's an obstacle of her race. Verse 26. Everybody get verse 26. It's Bible study. It tells us that this woman was from Tyre and Sidon. Now that may not mean anything to you, but if you look at the Bible and study Matthew chapter 15, verse 22, if you look at Matthew chapter 15, everybody go there, Matthew chapter 15, verse 22, it tells us that she was a Canaanite. This reveals two things about this woman. The first thing was that she was from a cursed place. Somebody say Bible study. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 2, she was from a bad place. Amen. So watch this. Her, where she was from. You know, people judge you where you're from. Oh, it's, it's good in here. People judge you where you're from. Now, there was an obstacle of her race. Number two. It's getting ready to get good. There's an obstacle of her religion. She came to Jesus and called out him, and she said, Lord, have mercy, O Lord, son of David. But she was a Gentile. She wasn't supposed to be saying nothing like that. It's getting ready to get good, y'all. Gentile mother crying out to a Jewish Messiah. She had no right to come to Jesus like that. And so Matthew chapter 15, verse 23, says, Jesus, answer not a word. Now that's, that's me. Jesus calling and he ain't saying nothing. It's going to get good, y'all. Not only, watch this, she has to deal with an opposition that has something to do with her race, her religion. And then watch this. Look at what the, how the disciples treated her. When the disciples see her and they heard that this Gentile woman is calling to their Messiah, their reaction to Jesus, they tell Jesus, send her away. Oh, that's me. Somebody say, that's me. They didn't want nothing to do with her and she was not one of their people. So since you ain't one of us, then you can't hang with us. And God knows his church got clicks. All the big people hanging together. Come on now. All the skinny people hanging together. All the people that wear, come on now, help me out. Good wigs, y'all hang out together. All the ones that wear bad wigs, y'all hang out together. Come on, help me in here. Church got sections. The world got sections. You can't hang with us because you don't make enough money. Oh, I'm talking good. Or you can't hang with us because you don't do this or you don't dress this way. Oh, it's in, it's in, it's not only in the church, it's in the world. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. But then she has to deal with rejection. Look at rejection. As Jesus speaks to this woman, his words are harsh to the ears. Look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 23 to verse 26. His words have shaken her to her very core. His words probably broke her heart. Finally, Jesus ignored her and he, he ain't saying anything. And then 
again. Watch what he says. Y'all, I love the word of God. You ain't got to watch Jerry Springer. You ain't got to watch all them shows. Look at this, because this good right here. Jesus almost calls this woman a dog. Y'all better read y'all Bible. It's getting good. Because some of y'all don't know this kind of Jesus. Y'all know Jesus that'll touch you and hear you. Come on now. But I want you to see this Jesus. How many people believe the word of God? Amen. It's in there. Watch this. Watch what happens. She's continuing to press on. And Jesus tells her, refers her to a dog and says, this is for the children's bread. This is the children's bread. And the reality of this situation is harsh. Her daughter is possessed by a devil. She's from a doomed race. These, relig these religious men don't care about her. And it appears that this is a hopeless situation. Are y'all listening to me tonight? And some of us are dealing with the same barriers tonight. Amen. Amen. Oh, this is good. Others have been praying and seeking God. I'm getting ready to say something good. You don't want to miss this, Sister Joanne. You don't want to miss this, Sister Shirley, about matters that trouble your heart. Amen. And you cried out to him and you asked him to do that and to do this in your life. There is no answer. You feel like giving up, but let me encourage you tonight. Here it is. God's silence is not an indication of God's unwillingness to meet your need. Y'all better wake up. I'm going to say it again. Watch this. God's silence is not an indication of God's unwillingness to meet your need. God's silence is moving and shifting your faith. It is building your faith because some of us always need an answer. We always have to be in the know. And you're going to kill yourself trying to always get an answer. And you may not get an answer at that moment. Sometimes you got to wait on the Lord. Amen. Oh, it's good. It's good. And that's what's wrong with us. Seasoned folk, I tell you, get somewhere and sit down. It'll happen. Amen. Amen. And young folk are running wild. Yeah. Busy. Yeah. Always got to do something. And seasoned folk will sit down and say, that's all right. It'll come back around. <laughs> I need some seasoned folk. I need some people with some gray hair and the ones that died it. I need y'all to say amen right here. Because this is what's wrong with our junk young generation. Everything is like this. Boom. Boom. Everything. And if it don't happen like this, they give up. The name of this lesson is a faith that presses and perseveres. And sometimes, amen, you got to just keep going. I wish I had a witness. Amen. Amen. And seek the Lord. Because watch this. Here's a good one. You better write it down. I got to say it slow because it's good. Your faith will not be defined by what you receive from God, but your faith, watch this, is not defined by what you receive by God, but what it takes to stop you from getting to God. So I want to ask you something. What's stopping you from getting to God? And it's a whole lot of stuff there. And if it stops you, your faith doesn't grow. But if you keep pressing, Lord, I'm teaching this lesson tonight. That's where your faith grows. 
You can always tell when somebody's faith is being tested because when they come in church, they don't look amen, they don't wave amen, they don't say amen. That's why I know that you're struggling tonight because you ain't saying nothing. And you need to understand God is stretching your faith. And if you can make it past this, you're going to be stronger than you ever had. Because we think, oh, I cannot make it. And God's saying, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I need some people here to shout with me. This ain't the first time you've been through something. Come on, help me in here. This ain't the first time. And can I tell you something? This ain't going to be the last time. How many people had some problems last year? Come on, wave your hand. Wave your hand. All right. Let me ask you a question. Y'all ready to shout? Did you make it? Can I ask you again? Did you make it? So if I made it last year, come on now. Guess what, y'all? We only got a season left. This year is flying. It went fast, didn't it? Yeah. Tell somebody, I got to make it. I got to make it. I got to make it. Verse 27. I promise I'm going to get to the good part. We're going to share in a minute. Hold on. Hang in there. This, this is Bible class. You got to learn something. Tell somebody I'm learning tonight. Jesus speaks with this woman. And he doesn't really slam hope in her face. He says, let the children first be filled. I want to tell somebody here, this is what she said that changes everything around. Are y'all ready? Because you got to do exactly what this woman did. Here it is. She calls on Jesus based on his role as a Jewish Messiah, and she receives no help there. She has no right to approach him on that ground. Keep, keep listening. She hears Jesus, tells her, tells her, Jesus tells her the mission that he's on the earth to give, to feed the children of Israel. And don't miss this. And then the Lord says something bad. He almost refers her to a dog. And watch what she says. She is, watch this. So persistent, and if it had been somebody in this church, you want to know what would happened? We never would have got what we needed. How many people have walked away and got mad and said, well, since you're talking like that, I ain't going to talk to me no more. Don't say nothing else. How many people have been treated wrong in a place of business? You drove off that lot, they ain't getting that. They ain't, they, I ain't saying that. How many people have been at, to a restaurant and they treated you bad at the restaurant? And you ain't giving no tip. You wrote something down on the napkin and give you all the tips right here. And you say, and what you do, you call somebody, you don't need to go to that restaurant. Can you imagine this woman? But she was persistent. She kept going. She said, I don't care what you say. I'm, I'm going to hang on in there. Amen. Amen. She didn't say, I don't need this. She was persistent in spite of everything that was thrown in her way. Why? Because it was too much at stake. Come on, help me. We're getting ready to get good now. Her daughter needed something. Her daughter needed to be delivered from bondage. Her family needed to be saved. And she needed help. And she was determined to get it. Amen. And when you determine to get something, don't nothing stop you. you got that right. Are y'all here tonight? When you really want something bad, can nothing stop you. And so watch this. As we approach Thanksgiving, here it is. A crumb might have been all she could get, but she knew that that crumb was from the hand, and that was more than enough. I wish y'all helped me in this church. How does your problem, what does your problem mean to you? How have you 
Have you encountered some obstacles along the way that made you want to throw up your hands? Come on, talk to me in here. But you said, you know what? There's too much at stake. I'm coming to church anyway. Come on, help me in here. Because I got to keep bringing it to Jesus until he do something about it. And seasoned folks say, if you pray and don't nothing happen, go down again. Come on, help me. This generation, I prayed three times. Then nothing happened. The season folk know you're going to be praying for some stuff a little while. Amen. Keep seeking his face until he responds. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. Amen. Everybody knows Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, what? Findeth. And to him that knock, it shall be open. Some of y'all ain't saying nothing, but I, if I was saying Lil Richard's song, keep it knocking, but you can't come in, ah. you start talking. Play too much. <laughs> What's wrong with y'all tonight? All right, here it is. Let's have church. Y'all ready? Guess what? Because... Jesus will respond. Come on now. He will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Somebody here know he will. And, and he's amazed by the depth of her faith. Jesus is amazed by her pressing. He's amazed by her perseverance in the fact that that this woman is the only one of two people that Jesus refers to as having great faith. Somebody say great faith. The other time that it happened was, was the other person was the Roman centurion who came to Jesus. Y'all remember that? He said, my servant is sick. And Jesus says, to them, oh, this, this is some faith right here. And I want to tell you something. Jesus tested her faith with hard words. And her faith had risen to the challenge. A doctor can give you some hard words. Come on, help me in here. Your job, you can get some hard your child, come on, help me, Amen. can say some hard words to you. Family can say some hard words. Come on, help me. Amen. And her faith exceeded, oh, we get ready to have a good time now, that of the people, watch, watch, watch this, that he had come to save. Here he is, a, gent, uh, uh, a Gentile. And, and who had more faith than the Jewish scribes and the Pharisees mm. and the sad, you see, and the priests. And this kind of faith excites the Lord. Amen. The Lord ain't looking for you to have faith during tax time. Uh. <laughs> the Lord ain't looking for you to have no faith. Come on, help me out if you just won the lot. Come on, help me here. The Lord ain't looking for you to have no faith when you all excited. And it's good. Come on now. And you ain't got a thing in the world. That ain't a faith that make God smile. But a faith that excites God is when your back is against the wall. And you don't see how you gonna make it out of here. Amen. Father was drafted driving in, in, in the storm and the daughter was back there smiling while the storm is going on. The father would, couldn't understand what this little girl was back there smiling in the window. It's lightning. The father's afraid of uh, the thundering. He tried to drive and here it is, his daughter back there smiling in the window while the storm is going on. 
home. And the father's just trying to get home because he's scared. He's been scared since he was a child because his mother said, when you hear the thunderstorm, turn off all the lights. That's God talking. <laughs> his daughter is, is eight years old in the back just smiling. They got home. He said, what was you smelling in that storm? Your daddy was afraid in that storm. Been afraid since I was a kid. She said, daddy, that was all right. I know in the storm, Jesus was taking my picture. <laughs> he said, what you mean? He said, when the lightning flashed, Jesus was taking my picture, trying to see what I look like in a storm. Come on now. Y'all sleep Come on in here now. tonight. You better say it. That father said, well, I flunked that test. She said, well, I passed. Because guess what? I had a good attitude while I was riding in the storm. And I ain't trying to preach to y'all tonight. That's for Sunday. But I want to tell somebody, Jesus is looking for a faith that makes him smile. Why are you going through every now and then? You ought to say, hello, Jesus. Because <laughs> some of us, we go through, and it's all right, you know. But every now and then, you need to turn that thing around and let the devil know, I'm still here. Come on, talk to me. Next time it rain, y'all better smile and say, he's taking my picture. <laughs> He rewarded her faith, y'all ready? By giving her exactly what she asked for. Amen. It's getting ready to get good tonight. He healed her daughter. Are y'all with me? Amen. I said he healed her daughter. Her faith was so strong that she didn't ask for proof. She took Jesus at his word. Y'all missing this. And turned around, Lord have mercy, and went home. And God is telling you to do the same thing tonight. Get what you get here. You don't need no proof, just take the word with you. Sometimes God will give you some proof. But tonight, you need to take this word with you. Amen. And when you take this word with you, don't mess it up. I wish I had a witness Amen. in here. What do you mean? What do you mean? Everybody, everybody, there is a scripture that I want to look at about the seed and the sower. Amen. And what happens is, um, let's everybody go to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And as you're finding Mark chapter 4, tell somebody, take the word home with you. I want us to look at Mark chapter 4. We got some reading we're going to do. When you have Mark chapter 4, Say amen. amen. Now, everybody repeat after me. Say, take the word home with you. Take the word home with you. I want you to look at somebody and say, don't let the devil steal your word. Tell them, tell them, don't let the devil steal your word. Because the devil is after what your pastor is giving you. Amen. She didn't need no proof. She went home to now watch this because the devil is after what you are getting right now. I'm going to show you. Y'all ready? Mark chapter 4, verse 3. Let's read together. When you got verse 3, say, I got it. One, two, three. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to do what? Verse 4. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and did what? Lord, have mercy. Don't let the devil take your seed. Here it is. Verse 5. And some fell on what? Stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately, what happened? It sprang up because it had no what? Keep going. 
But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no what? What it do? It withered away. Verse 7. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns did what? And did what? And it yielded no what? Verse 8. And others fell on the ground. On what? Wait a minute. Others fell on what? The ground. And did do what? Yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth what? Some 30 and some, some 60 and some 100. And he said unto them, He that hear, let him hear. Let me tell you something right now. There's a seed and a sower. Your pastor is dropping seeds on you tonight. Amen. I'm planting seeds in your mind. Come on now. Through the word of God, we are talking about a woman who had some difficult challenges and she hung on in there. It was rough for her. She hung on and God gave her a word and she went home with that word. But as soon as you leave, seeds, y'all ain't here with me. Some things can happen. And we saw what can happen. Because some, the fowls of the air get. Soon as you get outside, the fowls of the air, watch this, is a situation. It's life. It happened. As soon as you get outside, you didn't forgot what church was all about. Oh, I'm talking good tonight. You keep on reading. Some fell on stony ground. And it had much, it had no place. And immediately it sprang up. But watch this. The next part says the sun burned it up. Hmm. Situations outside of this church could cause you to forget what was planted. Mm. Oh, it just takes it away. The cares of this world just destroy. And we all know problems. You can have some problems. And sometimes you can't even pray. Amen. Amen. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you have. Amen. Sometimes you don't know how to get it out. Amen. But you got to make sure that you stay focused. Amen. Watch this. Sometimes you got to regurgitate. Lord mm. Yeah. Yeah. You got to chew on that thing for a little while. Yeah. It amazes me how we can chew on movies. Girl, did you see that movie? Lord Denzel is in Equalizer number 16. <laughs> and we just talk about stuff. How about you start talking about the word of God? Amen, Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. And chew on it a little bit. Come on. Our Bible study is late. So guess what? You can have that on your mind when you go bed to bed tonight. Amen, somebody. Because if you're not, listen, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me. This is true. If you don't have a word, you can't fight. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Everybody, 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 Ephesians 6. Let's go. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Let's look at it, Ephesians 6. Somebody say Ephesians 6. Now, this is what Paul says is our ammunition to fight against the devil. Now, now, this, this is going to be good here. Now, let's look at verse 11. When y'all get verse 11, we're going to read it together. Y'all ready? Everybody got Ephesians 6? Verse 11, if you got it, say, I got it. Let's read. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole honor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the what? Verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16. And above all, taking the shield of what? Wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery. Verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the. Which is the. So Paul is telling us that we fight with the what? Word of God. So if you don't have a word, how you going to fight? Hello, somebody. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, 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 let's go. Let's go somewhere. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's go somewhere. Because there's a, there's a, there's another scripture that, that talks about the word of God. How many people are being blessed tonight with this, with this lesson tonight? That's why we ought to be, amen, in, in Bible class. Amen, somebody. Because we got to learn how to fight. And if you don't have a word, tell somebody you can't fight. I know what word we got. We got a gossip word. That's what we got. And we know how to do that very much. Everybody, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Tell somebody, I can't let the devil steal my word. All right. So check this out. This is Jesus and the devil going at each other. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Matthew chapter 4. Everybody got it? Let's read together. First word is then. Let's go. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the what? To be tempted of the verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded do y'all hear that? Here is Jesus in a situation against the devil and the devil tempts him with food and he says that man don't live by bread alone but what proceeded out of the mouth of God I wish I had somebody here every time Jesus Needed ammunition, he said, it is written. I wish y'all get with me tonight. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. Jesus said unto him, what? It is written again, that thou shalt not do what? Tip the Lord thy God. Amen. Now watch this. The devil messed with him again. And in verse 10, Watch what he says. Everybody read it. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, for it is what? Written. That thou shalt worship the Lord, and him only shalt thou serve. So if it is written, that's the word of God. I'm going to tell you tonight, you can't fight without a word. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You need as much word as you can. Amen. And you ain't got to know whole chapters. You can get a piece of something. Amen. Come on, talk to me in here. You can get a piece of something and it will work. Yes, it will. How do I know you can have a piece of something? Because this woman had a crumb. Come on now. Hmm. All you need is a piece of a word. 
and some things will happen in your life. Come on now. I, I keep trying to tell you, watch this. That 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 boy, he was he was uh six years old. He was on Easter. Sister Parham, you can appreciate this. Six years old, and he was to say the, the 23rd Psalm. He got up there, had his little bow tie on. And them little high socks. You remember back in the day? Mm -hmm. Come on, don't y'all play, Sister Beverly, don't you play with me. I know you probably dressed Maurice like that one time. Them shorts with them high socks. And them bow ties. Come on now, help me out. Help me out. Some of y'all playing with me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I, had, I hated that outfit. My baby like that. Sister Joanne, don't play. I know you know what I'm talking about. That short set with the vest. Come on now, y'all know what I'm talking about. They don't make them no more. With them shoes, them shoes look like little bit clown shoes. Yeah, that's it. That boy, he's six years old. He got up there. He was supposed to do the twenty-third song. He got up there, and uh, he started looking at the church's faces. He was supposed to quote the whole twenty-third song, but because the way they was looking at him, he got scared. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd. That's enough. <laughs> I know that's right, baby. <laughs> and he that's walked right enough. back down and sat down in his seat. I know that's right. And, the, and his mother was upset. She said, where are the rest of it? And the pastor said, he said enough. <laughs> a piece of a word. Y'all not talking to me in here. You don't need the rest of it. All you need is the Lord is my shepherd. That's a word. That's a word. Tell somebody that's a word. Sometimes all we know is a word, just a piece of something. And I'm going to tell you something, just a piece of something to do you some good. Amen. I got five minutes. Watch this. Let's go to the lesson. Watch this. Jesus rewards her. Her faith was so strong. She didn't need to ask for proof. She just took Jesus at his word. Tell somebody I'm taking Jesus at his word. Went home to her family. And when she arrived to her house, we get ready to shout. She found her daughter healed. Amen. And the family restored. Amen. What a blessing. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. And some of y'all, y'all need something at your house, but you in his house. And I want to tell you tonight, if you do right in his house, he'll bless your house. Come on now. Yes, he will. For this woman, the child needed something. I don't know what you need in your house. I don't know. You know what you need in your house. Amen. But I want you to know, if you do right by his, come on now. Amen. He said that my house shall be a house of prayer. Amen. And I want to tell somebody there is hope for your situation. Amen. And tonight might be the day that the, watch this, that Jesus responds to your cry. That's why you ain't got time to come up here and be quiet. You got to say amen. You got to open up your mouth. You got to say a prayer because tonight may be the day that, watch this, you see a mountain mood in your life. Today may be the day, watch this, that you say something and God answer. And the day, the hardest time, listen to me, the hardest time to get to church is the time you need to be there. Amen. Amen. When you feel, oh, I can't make it today, you don't know if that's going to be the day. And the devil has been trying because the enemy knows something's going to happen today. And I'm trying to tell you this. The worst place to be in is the best place to pray in. Y'all ain't here with me tonight. Tonight may be the day where God speaks a word into your soul. Tonight may be the day that his peace replaces your pain yeah. and you get help for what you need. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. Look at Jairus. He placed his daughter in the hands of Jesus and Jesus raised her from the dead. Look at Lazarus. Come on, y'all. Help me. He was dead four days 
And Mary and Martha placed him in the hands of Jesus and Lazarus lives. Amen. Look at the multitude. They needed to be fed. Watch this. They had no food. Come on, help me now. And, and they had a few loaves and two fish. And they put it in the hands of Jesus. And suddenly, everybody had a fish fry. Y'all not talking to me now. Look at the disciples in the boat. Come on now. In the storm and in the middle of the lake. Come on, help me out. They were afraid they were going to die. And they placed themselves in the hand of Jesus. I want you to know tonight that you need a faith that presses and perseveres. And I want to tell you, you will see a turnaround in your life. Sometimes Jesus just wants you to get to know him better. Amen. Because Jesus knows if I do something for you, I probably won't see you again. Jesus. Jesus is tired of you treating him like a spare tire. Amen. Some of y'all don't even know where y'all spare is. It's up under all that crap in your, in, in your trunk. And what happens when your life get on the flat, you dig in there and find your tire, put it on, and then when you get a brand new one, you throw that thing back up in there, shut that trunk, and we'll never hear from that spare again. Amen. <laughs> and that's how we treat Jesus sometimes. Like a spare tire, and when our life gets on flat, oh, Lord, they're trying to take that thing apart. Amen. Jesus don't want you to do him like that. This woman was from a cursed place. You don't really want nothing. And she said, yes, I do. And I want to tell you, if Jesus is taking long, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up upon wings as eagles. Y'all hear me? Amen. They shall mount up upon wings as eagles. They shall walk, run, and not be real. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. I want to tell you tonight, and I mean it according to the Bible, I ain't making it up. Jesus is coming to your address. Amen. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, you hear me? Jesus is going to send a word to your address. I ain't trying to act like it's Sunday, but why are you trying to figure it out? He's already working it out. You must have a faith that presses and perseveres. Amen. Amen, somebody. Let's give God some praise right now in his church. Let's bless his name in his church. Lord, we want to thank you. We want to give your name praise. We want to give your name glory. We love you tonight. We thank you for our lesson. Bless those, God, that are here tonight and bless those that have been watching. Touch them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, right where they are in their house. Touch somebody on this pew tonight, God. Give them strength. Give them power. In the mighty name of Jesus, to keep on standing. And even though they have to cry sometimes, God, allow them to give a, get, let them keep standing. Even though they may get worried sometimes, give them power to keep on standing. We shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen.